Hey, what's up guys? I wanted to jump in the video here real quick to remind you to go on to thedunatic.com, get your hats, shirts, hoodies, get your merch. And I wanna let you guys know with all of this transmission carnage we had from Cletus's car, um, we're gonna go ahead and throw in a piece of Cletus's transmission in any random order from thedunatic.com. So guys, make sure you jump on, get your merch, and let's get back to the video. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. We are back once again in my shop out here in Mesa, Arizona. We got Che Bella up on the lift. As you guys seen from the last video, the cage is all done. Uh, those of you that did watch the video, thank you guys so much for watching. I know a lot of you uh, Dune fans don't like my Honda content. It's pretty obvious in the views, but I'm just gonna kind of bring you guys what I'm doing every day. So today, this is what I'm working on. So I'm gonna bring you along with me. Uh, you guys saw that the cage was done, NHRA certified to 850. And today we are rolling rod bearings into this thing. So, uh, I actually already finished the first one and then I realized I probably should be uh, filming this. So as you guys can see, I had a bunch of assembly lube dripping down there. So because I have to remove the girdle to do the center two, I'm going to do the outer two first. I already did this one. I'm going to go ahead and get this one pulled apart and show you guys what it looks like. So, uh, I got my, uh, three eighths, 12 point. We're going to go ahead and loosen these up pull the rod cap off, push the rod up, and uh, take a look at these bearings. I went ahead and knocked it loose already. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this rod bolt out. So, when you guys are rolling bearings into a motor, always make sure that you put the bolt back where it was. You don't wanna mix the bolts and swap them like that. That's uh, no bueno. So, uh, I'm gonna get these uh, dropped down. we will get this rod cap pulled off. So, and it's always good to roll bearings into your motor when you treat them the way we do. Um, I beat, and I, I beat the living crap out of this motor. So first ARP bolts out, I'm gonna sit it down here on the uh, bench, grab the second one off and then pull the cap down. So these are the standard King bearings and it looks like they're barely wearing the coating off. Like there's no wear on these things at all. So theoretically, did I need to change them? No, but this is just an insurance policy. And then I bought the, uh, I bought the King race bearings that are coated. So, all right, man, we're rolling these in and uh, we're gonna get back right. to it. Well, we got the next one dropped out. Let's take a look at this bearing. It's over here in the light. Uh, you know, for the abuse that I put this through, they don't look too bad to me. Um, I'm gonna take a closer look. I did take a picture of the first ones. I sent them over to Jamie at PFI because that guy is the master of rolling bearings into a motor. They pretty much roll bearings after every event. So uh, he looked at them and you know, like I said, these bearings don't owe me anything the way we beat on this. This motor probably has 50 passes on it. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get these bearings swapped out, roll the new ones in, and get back to it. So guys, again, same thing on the upper bearing. Got it cleaned off. The coating's not even barely worn off of it. So the other thing I always check, you never know what someone else has done in here because I actually did not build this motor. Uh, I scrambled and bought this bottom end already assembled because uh, I had like a week before race week. And then I, when I had found out that my uh, 85 or 84 millimeter motor was hurt. Um, so I always check the back to make sure it's standard bearings on every single one of them. Because like I said, you never know what someone else has done inside here. So don't go shoving a standard bearing. If the crank's been turned down on one of the journals and they oversized it on one journal, I know you shouldn't do that, but I have seen that done me in the past. So uh, always be sure you make sure you check the size on your bearing. There's a mark right here. So it says standard. So we're gonna go ahead and slap that one in and get her torque right, so up. I got my rod cap. I hit it with a little bit of bearings, brake clean, cleaned it up. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sit that bearing in here. And then I'll push the rod up off the crank right there, push it over to the side, pull that bearing out. And then I'll spray uh, spray brake clean all over the inside inner part of the rod and all over the uh, oops sorry about that guys all over the crank journal get it nice and clean and then I'll coat it with assembly lube and uh, get this okay, done. So I went ahead and uh, put the new rod bearing in, uh, push the rod back up, and as you guys can see, I kind of go crazy with the assembly lube. I uh, always want to lube these things up. So what I'll do now is take this rod and pull it back down and sit it on top of the crank. I'll show you guys that. I need two hands. So I reached up in there, grabbed the rod, pulled it down onto the crank. Everything seems to fit nicely. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this rod cap in and uh, get the bolts back in and torqued. Also guys, rod caps. 
They go in a specific way. So whichever way they come off, put them back that way. If you flip this around, you're gonna be in big trouble. Uh, these ones have riding on them. Um, when you have rods that don't have riding, normally when they're bolted together right here, I'll stamp numbers on them. One, two, three, four, and so on. And that way half the numbers on half the rod. All right, well, once you got them hand tight, go ahead and grab my torque wrench, get her set up to 20, 20 foot pounds. Uh, let me grab this socket. So I got the torque wrench set to 20 foot pounds. First one's at 20. Second one's at 20. And then I'm gonna move it up to 40 foot pounds. Um, you're gonna do them in two stages. These rod bolts have already been stretched. Um, normally when you put the grease in there and use the ARP grease, you torque these to 43 foot pounds. Um, I'm just gonna use oil that's already on them. So we're gonna torque them to 40. We don't need to go overboard on these. Uh, they're already stretched. So I'm gonna torque them to 40 and move on to the center tube. All right, once that's done, I've got these torqued. Um, you see, I've got a, a socket in the crank pulley. You wanna go ahead and grab it and turn, oh yeah, see? Just turn it a little bit. Just make sure that everything's still free flowing and free moving. That way you know nothing's bound up in there and we're good to go. Now we're gonna move on to the center. I'll go ahead and drop the girdle out and uh, give us a chance to at least check half the bearings on the uh, crank side. So we're gonna rotate the motor over and get the girdle off, get the middle bearings out. Okay, so instead of pulling the girdle, we're gonna go ahead and pull the caps like this. I think I can sneak them in and out of there uh, pretty good with uh, doing it this way. I think I can sneak them right out the back here actually. Got plenty of room. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and roll these things out of here. Snuck that one out the back. This is a good sign, guys. It look all pretty much identical, even where there's a few scratches in them, but nothing, like I can't feel that in my fingernail. I can just see it on the surface. So, another good sign, nice and even where the bearings all look the same. So I would be worried if one looked harsher than the other, but it doesn't, so looks like we're good to go. We're gonna get this cleaned up, keep on rolling. But guys, something else I noticed when I pulled this rod cap off, that one's been ground on. And that's actually not a bad thing. So what they're doing there is balancing the motor. So this motor's been balanced. It took, had to take a little bit off of that rod. So good sign. So whoever built this motor and put it together knew what they were doing. Um, or, you know, they had it balanced, which is good. Well, these rods were balanced at one time. Let's leave it at that. But anyways, uh, I actually do have another set of rods, a better set of rods that I could put in this motor. But then I have to pull the head and it's a whole thing. And we'll, uh, we'll get into that after race week. I think I'll put my better rods in this motor. These are Eagle H-beams and I'm pretty much at the limit and we don't want to let the Eagles fly if you know what I'm saying. So uh, I've got a set of... Uh, manly turbo tufts over there out of my other motor so if uh, my other block is still good and i get it back from the machine shop soon enough then i'll get a set of pistons for that i'll use the manly turbo tufts get another crank and i'll build a whole nother bottom end put it in the car and then i can pull this one out and completely go through it so um anyways guys we're going to get back to it we need to get that other bearing out get it clean and uh, get this finished up all right guys well here's our first sign of trouble so Got the upper bearing off, slid it out, and we've definitely got a pretty deep gouge in that bearing. Um, definitely feel it with your fingernail. I can feel it with my finger, and uh, it's gouged pretty good. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look heat related to me, guys. Um, and when I mean heat related, like anything spinning or seizing. That almost looks like there was a piece of debris or something got in the oil, got in the motor somehow, maybe from assembly. But I did go up here and inspect the crank and it's smooth, smooth as a baby's butt. So I think we're gonna be okay on the crank. I'm gonna flip it back around and I'll feel the other side. But so far, so good on the crank, it feels good. Probably be nice if I don't let that rod slam against it anymore either. Um, but no nicks in the crank, thank God. So it is good to uh, inspect your bearings every now and then, guys. And like we do, roll bearings in. And this is exactly why we do it. Um, I definitely would have had a failure there. Crazy. All right. Well, we definitely dodged the bullet. 
looking at the crank, everything looks perfect, nice and clean. And the camera's all dirty, but, and I got my fingerprints all over the crank. I'll hit it with some brake clean. There's a few little scratch marks on the crank there, just a hair, but uh, nothing you can feel with your fingernail. Everything's all smooth, so. Thank God, boys. Thank God we roll bearings. That's exactly why we roll bearings into these motors after, you know, so much abuse. Like I said, the guys at PFI, Jamie especially, he rolls bearings into his motor pretty much after every race. So, um, dodge the bullet. Moving on to the next right. one. So, I got it back together. Got this one in. Not a whole lot to see here. Just putting the rod cap back in and retorquing it. Uh, two steps. First did it to 20, then to 40 like I did on the others. We're going to go ahead and drop this last one out. And uh, hopefully she doesn't look like this one. Oh, same thing on the upper bearing. On that one. Definitely got some scratches in it. Something went through the oil, it looks like. Because you can see where it went up and through. Hopefully if whatever it was is in the oil filter. But same thing on this one. I checked the crank and... Crank's shining like a diamond, so we're good to go. Dodged another bullet there, so happy about that one, boys. All right, well, we got that last one in, got the new bearings in. Got our torque, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> got our torque set to 40. And we're good to go. Now see how smooth she rolls over. Ah, uh, look at that, guys. No binding, we're on a compression stroke right now, so. Yeah, look at that, like butter. So, new bearings in, crisis averted. Thank God, because uh, number two and three were not looking so hot. Um, here it is right here. So, I think something got in the oil and just got through. Either that or when this motor was being put together, it wasn't very clean. As you guys can see, normally my doors are open. I got the swamp coolers running. As you can see, since I'm doing motor work and the oil pan is off, everything's closed up. I got the air conditioning on. It's nice and cool in here. No music in the background. I just concentrate. And uh, that's normally what I do when I put motors together. It's quiet and calm in here. No music playing so I can concentrate on all my torque values and uh, get everything right. So. Crisis averted with Che Bella. Uh, thank God, because I still haven't built my backup motor yet. Uh, that is coming soon, but she's ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put the windage tray, the pickup, oil pan back on. Uh, Brandon killed it on the oil pan, got everything welded. And then uh, we were also, uh, I had a little bit of a crack here in my charge pipe, so we welded that up and got everything else ready to go. So we're gonna get her put back together. Rod bearings are back in. It was a success. And uh, I'm going to get Che Bella ready for race week. Guys, the other reason why it's so important that I caught that is because GSR cranks don't grow on trees anymore. Um, they're very hard to come by. If you can find them, they're very expensive. And you never know the history of them. So uh, if I get a GSR crank, normally I just buy a whole other motor that I know is running so I can get a good crank out of it. Um, to turn these cranks down, you can turn them down and re-nitrate them, but the process is expensive and the hardening, it's, it's just never the same anymore. Um, so I like to go with a standard crank, standard bearings, never been turned, never been touched, and uh, that's the way to go. But like I said, these cranks are getting harder and harder to come by. They don't make an Acura Integra GSR anymore. So um, I know there's millions of them that they did build and they are out there, but they are very, very hard to come by. So if you guys got any GSR cranks out there, let your boy know, cause uh, I'm always looking. So guys, after all that hard work in the shop, we needed a break. Our friend Kirsty from Kirsty's Cars came out to work on Sherry's Carmen Ghia, and we needed a little break. So our other friend Tom, you guys may know him from some of the PFI videos, invited us out to his place in Blythe, where they've got all kinds of flat bottom jet boats, something that Kirsty had never experienced before, and it had been a long time since I'd been to the river. So uh, if you guys wanna see her adventure at the river, I'll leave a link in the description down below of her video. She had a blast. We all had a great time at the river hanging out with our good friend Tom. So uh, I'll show you a little action here and then we'll get back to the video.
What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. We are out here at the big shop at San Limo today. And uh, I didn't really bring much content on this car, if at all, but uh, this is our counter guy, Dave. You guys have seen him in the videos, big Dave Unknown, our big counter guy. So uh, his car just came back from powder coat. Check this out, guys. That thing is shiny. This is a uh, San Limo squirt, I believe. And then what they did is they took the bulkhead that we use in the trucks and the Outlaw Baja bugs and put a full bulkhead front end on this thing. Set up for a sway bar. This is getting a big, big size cubic inch uh, LS in it with a uh, big transmission. This thing is friggin' cool. Dave, come show me some color. Let's put the blue against it. So we'll be covering this car as we put it together this summer. Shouldn't actually take that long. He's pretty much got everything to put the car together now. Color's done and, ah, this thing's cool looking. I like it. And that's the blue. Oh, look at it against the orange, though. Oh, dude. That's friggin' awesome. I can't wait. What's it? How long's it been? This car is two years? Two years. Two years in the making for Dave Unknown's car. Right and now. The yeah, yeah. So, oh. oh, man. I can't wait to get this thing going. Heck yeah. So, you guys will see this car out at the shop. Definitely. And, uh,. I can't wait to get this thing. When's the motor going to be done? Next month. Alper did it, right? Yep, Alper's done. What'd you do to the motor? Uh, 383. Oh, sweet. So LS 383. God, I think should make some jam too. So I can't wait to show you guys the, the A-arms and all the stuff on this bulkhead front end. It's, like I said, you guys normally don't see these in the cars we build. They're usually covered by a hood or in a Baja bug or a truck. But this front end makes this car just turn on a freaking dime, so... Killer build, another sand limo, going to be built for the summer. Also, guys, I have uh, read some of your comments about hearing me breathe in the camera. Um, it is the spring and summer out here in Arizona, and I have a very, very bad case of asthma. So if you guys hear me breathing heavy in the in the videos, man, I'm really sorry about that. But uh, my asthma really flares up in the, uh, in the spring and the summer here. We're back out here in the shop today, working on Che Bella. And uh, as you guys saw in one of the last videos, I broke the windshield and I was heartbroken about it. So I had some guys reach out to me, Mr. Autoglass AZ. They're out here to hook me up and hook Che Bella up with a brand new windshield. So uh, I think they felt pretty bad when they saw how heartbroken I was when I broke that windshield. And just talking to them right now, turns out that that was probably the factory windshield in this car too. So that's also a bummer. But these guys are gonna hook us up get a windshield installed for us and uh, get ready for race week, boys. Here we go. guys well new windshield is in che bella thank god she's starting to look like a car again and how can they get a hold of you if they want to, if guys want glass put in their cars uh we got a website that's around glass arizona um or our phone number is 602 i'll put a link in the description below to their instagram and their website that's mr auto glass az and they will get you guys hooked up if you're in the uh, arizona area so shout out to those guys thanks again for coming out and doing a windshield for me appreciate you guys Tay Bell is ready for race Always, week, guys. guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you give us a like and a subscribe, and we will see you in hey, the Hey, what's up, week. guys? I wanted to jump in the video here real quick to remind you 
to go on to thedunatic.com, get your hats, shirts, hoodies, get your merch. And I want to let you guys know with all of this transmission carnage we had from Cletus's car, um, we're going to go ahead and throw in a piece of Cletus's transmission in any random order from thedunatic.com. So guys, make sure you jump on, get your merch.